Hi everyone and welcome to Unwanted in Design. My name is Kimberly. I'm your instructor for today. Starting off first, we have our 11 by 14 size canvas long waist. Then we have our primary colors, blue, red, and yellow, our highlight color, white, and our shadow color, black. And of course, we have our brown. We're going to go over our brushes. We have first a large background brush you guys have it a little bit colorful mine is just basic I did misplace my other one perfect so you guys are going to be using the colorful one I'm going to be using this one next I have my square brush this is my 5 8 brush size 5 8 and it's square then we have our round tip brush this is our five and then we have our smallest liner brush which is a one or a 2-0. Perfect. So again, make sure you save these. These are the ones that we use for every single class. Also, we have our water, our towel, and our hair dryer or our fan. Okay, so starting off, if you notice our paint um, is a little bit sticky. I always bring that up. Okay, so it is a little bit sticky. We're gonna make sure that we add a little bit of water to make sure that this paint is nice and smooth. And we're actually gonna start with our big ground brush first. So we're gonna be adding a little bit of water to that, picking up some white. Let's start off at the corner of our white. And to this white, we're gonna be adding some blue. There we go. So for this, we're going to go about halfway up the canvas, and then we're going to move our hand over, and where our hand ends, that's where our line is going to be. From here, we're going to be using this light blue color, and we're going to start to bring it up towards the top. As we start to move our way up, we're going to pick up a little bit more blue until it gets really dark all the way on top. So I'm coming in, picking up a little bit more of that water. See how that's looking? Come back, pick up a little bit more water, a little bit more blue. And I'm going to start making it a little bit darker now as I'm going up. Come back, pick up a little bit more water a little bit more blue, and then we're going up. So I'm gonna give you guys a couple of minutes to do this. We're bringing our blue all the way towards the top. Up next, we'll be using our square brush. Right now, making sure we add plenty of water to the white. Then we're gonna get our big brush and get our number five eighths brush and we're gonna tap it to make our stars. So go ahead and work on that. When you're done with these stars, If you don't want to get your area so dirty, you can get your brush and just flick it and you'll get the same effects. So you can flick it towards the paper and you should get the same effects. And with the little, little brush, we're going to do a moon. After that, we should be able to blow dry our sky and there won't be a problem there. So I'm going to come in with my moon while my white is still wet. Your moon might get a little bit blue, that's fine. Just come back with a little bit more white. 
it'll clear it out. If you guys want to make a falling star, just make a dot and pull it. And there we go. We got two falling stars. So I'm going to give you guys a couple of minutes. Take your time. Don't get frustrated. Don't freak out. Just take your time and paint it. There's no right way. There's no wrong way. I'm doing this the way that I, I know how to do it. And I'm do, showing you guys my style. But yours is not going to look exactly like mine. Yours is going to look different because you guys have your own style. Like I say, every single class, embrace it. Embrace your style. Embrace the way that you guys use the brush. You know what I mean? You guys have to be your biggest cheerleaders. If you don't cheer for yourself, who's going to cheer for you guys? So moving on, we are going to be using our big brush first. We're going to be picking up a little bit of water and adding it to our black. That's going to be the next color that we're going to be using, okay? And we're going to be painting the bottom all black. Remember, we do paint in layers, so we're going to add the ground first, then we're going to work on the trees, we're going to dry it, and then we're going to start to add all of the highlights and the levels on top, like the bonfire, like the marshmallows, like the fire and the wood. But we are doing our base first, and this is our first level, what we're doing right now. So we're coming back. If it gets too sticky, remember to come back with a little bit more water. Get your paint nice and soft. Again, we want it to feel like the sour cream you dip your chips in. Nice and soft. Right now we're laying the groundwork for when we come in and apply the rest of the paint. If you guys wanted to do a full moon, if you guys want to add extra stuff, go ahead and do it. So once we've painted the ground, we're coming in with our number five brush. And we're going to start to do some lines. What are these lines for? These lines are for our trees. So we're going to start off first right in the middle. We're gonna cut our canvas in half and on the right hand side, we're gonna come in and do a tall tree. See that? This one is the biggest one. That's one. You're gonna skip a little bit. You're gonna do a shorter one. Next to that, you're gonna do a taller one again, but not too tall. We want it shorter than that one. And here, an even shorter one. You see that? So really tall, short, a little bit taller, and even shorter. This one is the shortest one. Next to it, we're going to do another line, maybe another short one, and then one more tall one. Remember, this one is the biggest tree, though, the one right in the middle. Once we have done these lines, you're going to come in with your brush. And from the top, you're going to start to make almost like a little arrow. You see how that looks like an arrow? Let me zoom in so you can see it a little bit better, guys. So we're going to press and then wisp. So press and lift so you can get all those scratchy lines. And then what you're going to do is you're just going to keep doing that and it's going to get bigger and bigger as we start to go lower. See that? We're going in the middle across to the left. I'm going down from the left again. I'm going to the middle down to the right. Really fast. I'm letting the hairs leave these little wisps behind. So side, middle, to the right, side, middle, to the right. And we're going to do that all the way down until it erases or it joins the ground. And there we got it, one tree. 
Again, I'm going to pick up a little bit of water. We start on top. We make a V. And as we go to the bottom, the tree gets bigger and bigger. If it connects with the other tree, that's fine. That's not a problem. See, and we're just going to play with all these, making them all trees. Guys, so from here, we are going to be using the same brush we used for our trees, except that we're going to mix a little bit of blue this time with some yellow. So let's see what that gives us. That gives us green. Look at how pretty that looks. We don't want the green to be super bright. We want it to still look dark. After all, it's still night. So we do want it to stay dark. So that means if it's too bright, add a little bit more blue. That way it gets darker. The more blue you add, the darker green you get. The more yellow you add, the lighter green you get. So we're going to get this. And what we're going to do, let me show you a little bit right here on the middle one. What we're going to do is we're going to be adding some highlights on the trees. Okay. So here's our big tree. We're going to come in with our yellow or our green, and we're just going to scratch some lines on there. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm not really like, oh, then look at how cool, look, look at how perfect it is. No, I'm not thinking that. I'm just making some lines. It could be a little loose, it could be scattered, just so it looks like the moon is reflecting on the tree, creating some highlights on some sections. See, that way it looks like the black is a shadow and it looks like the green is what's getting that moonlight on there. So I'm gonna do this again. I'm gonna add some of this green around. When you're done with this green, if you want, you can add a little bit more white to your moon. I'm gonna add just a little bit more because my moon turned blue. So it's up to you guys. So again, we're gonna go in, we're gonna do this to all our trees, just scratch it nice and loose. It doesn't have to be perfect. Don't be hard on yourselves. You know, a lot of you guys are like, I know you guys are like super awesome and smart, but this class is supposed to be so that you learn how to use your brush, not so you know how to make a perfect picture. You learn how to use your brush. You learn how to use your paint. That's the purpose of this class. The picture is just a plus. As long as you know how to use your brushes, as time passes by, you're going to get better and you're going to be able to, to draw better. But don't make your focus your picture. Make your focus that you know how to maybe, for example, make these scratches. Maybe you don't know how to make scratchy lines. Maybe um, you're having a little bit of a trouble 
um, controlling your brush. You know, everybody in the beginning has issues with their brushes. You know, maybe they don't know how to make straight lines or they're having problems getting the same effect over and over and over again. That's what we're doing right now. We're doing our practice. On average, artists are supposed to paint at least three hours a day so that you start to see the difference. I know you guys have school, so you guys might not be expected to paint three hours a day. But when you get older, as you get older, whenever you have free time, instead of getting on your phone, draw something, paint something. You know what I mean? Uh, practice mixing your colors. So there's, imagine you can totally make this yourselves. Instead of doing a night sky, maybe you can make an evening sky. Maybe you could use purple or pink. Maybe you can use baby blue all the way to the top and put clouds and a sunrise. So what I want you to do again is to practice and feel comfortable using your brush so that it becomes super easy and second nature to you. And it doesn't, it doesn't overwhelm you or intimidate you to draw or to paint with the brushes and with the tools that you have. Eventually, the more you practice, it'll be easier to paint what you see in your head and be able to accurately put it on paper. Okay, so I'm coming in. I mean, adding a little bit more of that yellow and green all the way down. And look at how that looks. Super easy, super fast, not complicated at all. From here, we do have our trees. And on the side, I'm gonna give you one more thing. We're using our square brush and a little bit of brown. And we're just gonna kind of scratch that so it looks like that's dirt in the back. See, nice and loose. So again, work on your trees and then work on the brown on the bottom. Take your time, there's no pressure. I'm gonna give you guys a couple of minutes just to do this stuff. So take your time. And if you're finished, you can go ahead and blow dry this so that we can move on to the next step. Again, see how I'm just scratching this on there? If you want a lighter brown, you can add just a little bit of yellow to it too. So again, I painted my trees with the blue and yellow, which made the green. And then in the bottom, I'm just adding some brown and brown with yellow to make this highlight. And there we go. I'm going to give you guys some time to catch up. Take your time. Don't feel pressured. And then we'll be moving on. We're going to pick up our round tip brush now. The same one we've been using. I want to say pick it up now, but you've been using it, you know? So we're using our round tip brush now. And we are going to be picking up a little bit of red and yellow. And if you look at mine, I ran out of some of that red and yellow. So I'm going to have to add some more paint. Let me add a little bit more paint in there because I'm literally like running out. Okay, I think I might need a little bit. No, that's enough. I'm always worried. I don't like to add a lot of paint just because I don't like to throw away my paint. I'd rather just add more than to throw it away. It makes me sad. I want to cry, you know? It's like, man, I'll just rub it on my face then, you know? At least I don't throw the paint away. So we're going to start off first with our dark orange color. So we're coming in with our round tip brush. We're going to be picking up some of this red and we're putting that red into the yellow and pushing it off to the corner. So if you notice, we're getting a dark orange. The more red you add, the darker orange it's gonna get. The more yellow you add, the lighter it's gonna get. So we're coming in with some of that red into that yellow. Okay, and we're gonna start to draw our, our um, fire here. So let's start off first right at the top. I'm going to come in, or you know what, let's do it right at the bottom. So we're going to come in on the side, and we are going to be making an arch right in the middle. You see that? And this is going to be where our campfire is going to be. Remember, we still need space on the sides for our marshmallows, so we don't want to use that side so much. Then from here, let's start shaping our fire first. So we're going to curve in. Same thing here, we're gonna curve. This one's gonna be out, you see that? That's a really weird shape, huh? Let me add a little bit of yellow so you could see it better. 
Okay. This one is going to go all the way up. It's going to come down. And then this fire is going to go all the way up. See that? Look at the shape of that fire. Super weird. So it looks almost like a teardrop with a bunch of little dips in it. Okay, so imagine you're drawing a little teardrop, but then you have a little dip here. It goes up to the middle and it goes out to the side. It looks to me like a really, really gnarly guitar. Just saying. So I'm adding a little bit of that dark orange and that dark orange is gonna go on top. We're gonna brush that down. I'm gonna come in. Okay, and we are gonna be painting this in with that dark orange and red. You can add a little bit more red inside if you want. Look at how cool that's looking. After it dries, you can even add another layer because sometimes when it dries, it dries a little bit light. And because the color underneath is so dark, it might not stand out as much as you want it to stand out. So then down here, since this is bright orange, the bottom is gonna be more yellow and a little bit lighter orange. See that? So I'm getting that yellow. And I'm gonna start to paint some lines, kind of like the ones up here. I'm gonna do them down here too. So see this one goes up. There you go, gonna start to fill this in, pick up a little bit of red. So again, if you even wanna add a little bit of white to this fire, you're like, what teacher, white? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can totally add a little bit more white and that'll make your yellow even brighter. Look at that. White with your yellow. Look at how that fire is looking, super fancy. I don't know about you, but this looks like a fire that I want to make s'mores in. Double marshmallow for me, please. Ooh, I love it. Nice. From using this big brush, we move on to our little, little brush, our skinny, skinny one. And we're gonna keep using some of this yellow and some of this orange to make it look like if there's some fire on the side too. You see that? So this one, I'm gonna add a little extra to it. See, and now it looks like there's some fire on the sides. Usually looks more difficult than what it really is. So I'm giving you guys a couple of minutes to get fancy with this. Maybe about another two minutes to get fancy with your colors here. Again, if you wanna add another layer, you can add some more. You can add some lines, make it look as if the fire is going upwards. Look at how cool that looks. Adding a couple of lines going up on the flames. Get fancy with it. Use your imagination, get comfortable with your paintbrush. So starting off, picking up our round tip, we're getting a little bit of water, mixing it in with our brown. I'm gonna zoom in so you can see it a little better, but we're gonna start off on the right, making two lines with that brown. You can mix a little bit of yellow, and then we'll be doing an oval. We'll be repeating that process as we're going down towards the middle, making the lines more centered as we go towards the bottom, and more left as we go to the left. We are now working on the wood using our round tip brush. We're gonna pick up a little bit of yellow with that brown. We're gonna start making these lines of our wood using our number five brush or our round tip brush. Okay, again, we're doing our two lines and an oval, two lines and an oval, and we're doing that all the way around. This one, if you wanna do one to the side, you can do one and just make an oval right there. So again, two lines and an oval, two lines, and an oval, 
And there we go, we have our wood pieces right there. So what do we do here? We're gonna pick up a little bit of our brown. Okay. And we're gonna to start to paint this in. Let's start to paint these wood pieces in with that brown. You can also add a little bit of white to this brown. If you wanna add different colors, make it look like wood, you see that? And just scrape it on top, scratch it very fast. Don't push, don't mix it, just scratch it on top. And that way it looks like there's wood up there. See that? It's starting to look more like wood. You can also use a little bit of brown with black for the shadows. So you use brown, brown with yellow, brown with white, or brown with black. And the brown with black is a little bit darker. You see that? Okay, so we're going to go ahead and fill in these wood pieces. Some of that brown. Okay, pick up a little bit of that white again. Making some wood marks. You want to grab a little bit of that brown with a drop of black to make it darker. And then finally, we're going to get some of that brown with a tiny little drop of black and we're going to fill in this center piece right here. I'm going to add just a little drop of brown. You can even add a little bit of red too. That'll change the color and the way it looks. So we're coming in, we're doing these ovals. Off of the side here, we're going to grab a little bit of that brown and yellow. And we're going to make our stick here that's holding our marshmallow. So we're coming in, there's one stick off of the side. Down here, we're gonna have another stick. And then from the big brush we've been using, the round tip, we're gonna use the very little brush. This little brush, with this little brush, we're gonna add maybe a couple of branches on that stick. You can make a couple of lines so that it looks more like wood on the stick also with a little bit of yellow, with a little bit of the black brown here, the darker brown, you can make some of those lines. Same thing down here. Perfect. And then with those lines or with that little brush, you're also gonna come in right here and you're gonna do a little swirl right in the middle. You see that? There's one right here as well. And I'm just gonna bring that all the way around. And the final thing that we have left to do, well, not final, but second to the final thing we have left to do, we still got two more things to do. One is to make our marshmallows. So we're gonna come in right here, make two lines. So it's like a square, you see that? We're making two lines on the side. Here on top, we're curving it up. And here at the bottom, we're curving it down. And you know why we're curving, curving it down? Because we're gonna do another oval down here. See? Up on top here, we're gonna do the oval on top. Then we're gonna do our lines and our marshmallow there. So our marshmallow is gonna be filled out with some white. Okay, and we start to fill in our marshmallow with that white. We are gonna be working on the bottom half of this marshmallow. I mix some white with some gray. 
And there's our shadow for our marshmallow. And then up here, we have our shadow on top. You see how it looks with those shadows? You, you see how it looks 3D? And the only thing from here we have left to do is to add our uh, branch towards the bottom. So here we go. We're doing our branch connected from the bottom. And then this one, our branch is coming out of the top. So it looks like it's going through our marshmallow. You see that? Boom. Now it looks like it's finished. The final, final, final thing we have to, to do, which is the hardest part, is to do our super awesome signature right here on the right hand side. After this, you're done. Let's zoom out and see what this looks like. Thank you so much for joining me. Make sure to check out our videos on our website at www.unwindanddesign.org.